What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today we are going to do a mad scientist experiment that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I finally got around to doing it. So with that said, let's get into it. So when I was in uh, third and fourth grade, I was already taking apart TVs and screwing around with stuff that I had no business screwing around with. I guess that's what happens when you leave someone like myself unsupervised. Anyways, I've wanted to do an experiment with you guys for a long time to demonstrate the radioactivity of something to do with welding, and that something is TIG welding tungsten. It might come as a surprise to a lot of you, but certain TIG welding tungsten, like what I have here that's used in TIG welding, uh, is actually radioactive. And I know you're probably asking yourself, well, why on earth would it be radioactive? And the answer is pretty simple. Pure tungsten that is unalloyed with anything else actually works pretty poorly uh, on AC and at high amperage. And if you need to pass a lot of current through such a small little piece of metal such as this, uh, alloying tungsten, the element tungsten with other things, gives you more or less a more stable retention on the point of it, and it just works better. Well, a long time ago, they figured out that mixing thorium, in the case of TIG welding, typically 1% to 2% in the tungsten, uh, provided a lot better point retention so your arc cone would stay consistent than just pure. And, well, that's what we used in the piping world and in the welding world in general for a very long time until you started getting alloys like 2% lanthanated, 1% lanthanated, E3, which is a blend of different alloying elements. Long story short, uh, the good old faithful 2% thoriated tungsten has kind of been phased out. However, a lot of places still use it. You can identify typically by the red band that's on the tungsten. Now, look guys, we all know that welding in general really isn't good for our health. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and lie to you. It certainly is smart and in your best interest to wear a mask anytime you're welding, but a lot of us in the industry don't do too well, egos and whatever. But I thought I would share with you a little experiment that we can do to where we can actually see the radioactivity of the thorium in the tungsten. In order to help us witness this radiation of sorts, we are going to build what's called a cloud chamber. And I'll give a quick overview of this. If you really want to know how to build one of these, go and look it up on Google or something. It'll help you out. But anyways, we have a fish tank that I adhered felt to. I have a baking sheet and I have denatured alcohol. I also have some plumber's putty, and I'm going to create dry ice via a CO2 tank that I have in a sock. And we're going to take all of those ingredients, which is a pretty ridiculous bill of goods, I guess, and we're going to create what's known as a cloud chamber. In very simple terms, we're just going to saturate the felt that's in here, flip this upside down, set this on dry ice, a.k.a. solid CO2, that will create a temperature change or a very cold surface down here and the top of it's going to be warm. This alcohol that's saturated on the felt that is in that tank will start to vaporize or more or less kind of atomize off of the felt and it's going to create a cloud of denatured alcohol more or less. And all this stuff is, is basically ethanol with a few extra bonus chemicals to where you can't really drink it. So we're playing with ethanol more or less. Now the whole purpose of this is that we're going to put some of these tungstens inside of this cloud chamber. And once we actually get clouds of denatured alcohol in it, we should be able to see the alpha particles that are jumping from this as that thorium is decaying and we should be able to see remnants of them jumping off the tungsten uh, in through the cloud more or less of the alcohol vapor and i'll put up a little bit of an explanation as to how that works just to help you if you're interested but it's going to be pretty sweet because we should be able to tell the difference between thoriated and non-thoriated tungsten now, I got to be honest, when I buy tungsten, I buy them from what I would consider as a reputable supplier. But how do we know 
that <laughs> maybe all the tungsten that's out there might be radioactive with alpha particles due to the thorium, uh, regardless of what you buy. And that's one of the unfortunate cases of this is that you buy it assuming you're not buying thoriated tungsten, but what's to say it's not? Well, that's why I have some supposedly non-thoriated, aka 2% lanthanated, that we're going to be comparing to ones that I know are absolutely sold as thoriated tungsten. And we should see no particles off the lanthanated and some off the thoriated. At least that's the theory of it. But again, we never really know what alloy we're really dealing with. The last thing I'm going to say regarding this, and then we're going to get to the experiment, is that alpha particles in themselves aren't really that dangerous. I know a lot of people out there like, well, thoriated tungsten, you know, it's going to give you cancer. Well, alpha particles don't really penetrate the skin very well, nor your organs. They're not like a lot of the other particles or gamma radiation, for that matter, uh, that kind of gives no shits about your skin and cooks your internal organs more or less at very high doses. But alpha particles are dangerous when you inhale dust that is emitting it, aka you grind a point on these suckers and then you're breathing the dust. That is when this stuff becomes far more dangerous. And like welding in general, the dust is what will probably get you, the dust and the fume. The actual materials as they sit, much like this tabletop, aren't really dangerous. But turn this tabletop into dust and breathe it for a year or two and guess what? Your lungs aren't going to be too happy. So with that said, I always tell people if you're going to grind a lot of tungsten, wear a mask and do it outside. Don't fill your shop full of dust from this stuff. And it doesn't matter if it's lanthanated, thoriated, whatever. Tungsten dust is a heavy metal and it's not really... I'll put it to you this way. Your body is not designed to remove and filter this out of your blood, out of your lungs. And I guarantee you in the long run, if you breathe a lot of this stuff, not even a lot, enough of it, it's going to cause undesirable side effects. So please be smart with this stuff. And, you know, use an enclosed grinder or grind outside with a mask and wash your hands. You know, it can easily get into your body. And like I said, that the alpha particles off the thoriated tungsten are not good for you once they get in your body. Outside of you, just here on the bench, these aren't really going to do a lot to you, but you don't want that dust in you. All right, with that said, I'm going to get set up and we're going to see what we can get for uh, particles on this detector. So here everything is set up and we have the start of alcohol vapor cloud above the tungsten here. Uh, it's a little bit out of focus for some of this. So anyways, it's uh, about a quarter of the speed this normally would be. We will see it in real time, but we're looking for long white traces as that thorium decays, alpha particles are emitted, and we can see the trace in the alcohol vapor. Of interesting note, all of thorium is an unstable element and they all basically are radioactive. They output alpha particles and over time, in the case of some thorium billions of years, uh, it will become a stable element. But this stuff right here being 2% thorium uh, is going to be unstable for a very long time. You may have already seen some of the white streaks just like that one. That is an alpha particle. You can tell because it's a real wide straight line that comes straight out of that tungsten. That's an alpha particle being emitted. Now being that this alloy has a low amount of thorium in it, it's not overly visibly radioactive. I mean, it has all of the signs that it is, but if we were to compare to other elements that are far more radioactive, like say even 100% thorium, you would see what would appear like shooting stars off of it continuously with no breaks. So this is pretty low in radioactivity. Now the tungsten on the far left that's the longest, that's 2% lanthanated, and I didn't really film much of it, but I never saw any particles jump off of it. These three shorter ones are all 2% thoriated and all showed evidence that they were radioactive. All right, well, let's watch this in real time at normal speed.
Here's another angle of the same tungstens, and I'm going to play this twice, both at real speed, because I think you guys get the idea here, but it's pretty fascinating to watch. Also, keep in mind, if you were to build one of these cloud chambers, you can actually see background radiation coming from all sorts of uh, sources. So from outer space, from your granite countertops, all sorts of stuff. But keep in mind that alpha particles in particular don't generally make it very far. So you got to be pretty close to the source of the radiation and a lot of things will block them. Case in point, the tape that's holding it down seems to block a lot of the particles that might be coming out through that because all of them seem to come from the exposed area of the tungsten. So it doesn't take a whole lot to stop them. All right, let's watch it again without commentary. Well, mistakes are made, imagine that's in a channel name, right? Anyways, I swapped over to this smaller little tank, smaller tray from the larger one. I realized pretty quickly that based on my homemade dry ice via a CO2 tank in a sock, I didn't have enough of it to get that plate on that larger tank cold enough, and it was taking forever, I had issues. So by swapping to this, I was able to get the results that I wanted. Now, the bigger tank works a lot better because you tend to have more cloud, per se, of that alcohol vapor. But for what we were looking at today, this worked just fine. Anyways, as we found out, yes, uh, thoriated tungsten is radioactive. Yes, it outputs alpha particles. We can tell by the trail in the cloud vapor. And no, at least this 2% lanthanated tungsten, the thinner stuff here, uh, did not show any reaction whatsoever, which to me would tell me that no, it's not radioactive. So that's good. They're not just selling you a bill of goods that is not what it seems, aka here, have some thoriated tungsten, even though you don't want that. So that's a good sign. Anyways, uh, it is pretty interesting that TIG welding tungsten can be radioactive. I mean, this test proved it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Now, is it enough to really be a serious concern? My opinion is, just sitting here on the table, no. If you're going to grind this in your shop and breathe the dust of it, I would be more concerned, highly concerned over that. And that's why, like I said earlier in the video, you should really be smart when grinding tungsten. That dust, regardless of if it's thoriated or not, is not something you want in your lungs. So be smart about that. With that said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something. If you get any comments, questions, thoughts on this, feel free to leave them. Until next time.